think they've got the numbers pretty much set for the state. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. I somewhat facetiously said on the radio the other day that why don't they just spend another $300,000, maybe buy the town of Cumberland, my hometown, a new street sweeper since we don't seem to get our streets swept until mid-June anyway. Then I realized uh, I may be a victim of my kids' investigation math program because I kind of missed a zero. The state budget is $9.97 billion. Now quickly, don't look and don't grab your phone and don't look for a calculator. How shy is that of 10 billion? You have 10 seconds. Anyway, uh, it's not 300,000, it's 30 million. So I think they probably shouldn't spend 30 million just to get to 10 billion. But I promise you by next year, they'll get to ten billion dollars because they just can't seem to turn the spigot off great to have you in thank you very much for joining our program this evening steph machado now of target 12 fame will join us she's on the city hall beat and also is keeping a close eye on the state house we told you that ted nisi was going to join us but he's got a really bad excuse he better get a written note um something about breaking news and like doing his job <laughs> we'll uh we'll see ted on that somewhere down the line um, hey, the president had a rally last night. Gee, what a different thing. Uh, revisiting the 2016 campaign, they say, huh? Here's how the network surmised it. Keep America great. President Trump made it official last night, kicking off his 2020 re-election bid at a packed rally in Orlando. I stand before you to officially launch my campaign for a second term as president of the United States. The president hit on some of the same themes he used during his successful 2016 campaign, including illegal immigration. The Democrat agenda of open borders is morally reprehensible. The 75-minute speech earned rave reviews from most of the 20,000 in attendance. I thought it was a great beginning to a great re-election campaign. One of Mr. Trump's potential 2020 opponents, Senator Bernie Sanders, had a different reaction. I just had the extremely unpleasant experience of actually watching Donald Trump in action. Sanders said the president ignored two of the biggest issues facing the country, climate change and income inequality. And he will continue to ignore that. That, that doesn't interest him or his base. The president's doing a really unique thing. He's repeating his speech. There's absolutely nothing different from his 2016 rallies than what happened last night for 2020 here in 2019. Same anger management or anger and frustration sponsorship same drain the swamp promises. I just, I, if, if you're one of the folks who would attend one of these rallies, and I have to admit, by the way, there isn't a Democratic candidate on the horizon who can put 20,000 people into an arena for a political rally. So there's no doubt that this base continues to be active. But I ask you a couple of questions. Uh, what swamp has been drained? He's filled that place with nothing but people like him who have opportunities to make money from their work there. But what, 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 what swamp has been drained? In the meantime, what has been drained is a level of functional government, you know, between the White House and Congress and, and, and bureaucracy. You know, the people in here, you think that's fat. Guess what? That's function. And sooner or later, we're going to figure that out. That's not a liberal point of view talking here. That is a functional point of view talking here. Uh, you know, whether the Democrats are able to pin any of this kind of stuff on the president is beyond me, because I think there's a group here in this country who just is adamantly saying they'll never vote for Donald Trump. And then there's, a, there's, there's the base, which is as active on, I think, more of a reaffirmation of what they've done type of basis than really on a basis of checking the, the you know, the notes as to what they were promised and what's been accomplished. So... It's going to be a really fascinating situation. What really caught me, though, is Don Jr. last night uh, during this rally suggested that the president's life, quality of life, has been lessened. 
since he became president? Well, if he's unhappy, if he's unhappy, why don't we relieve him of his unhappiness? Uh, I'm not here to vote for a victim. I'm here to vote for someone who joys every day leading this country. Didn't realize he was so despondent. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move along here to Warwick where same old song and dance. Just play this fiddle one more time. Uh, this state is so dysfunctional and the way we run city governments uh, just follows suit. So the Warwick City Council has supplied eight less million dollars to the school committee than it's asking for. They, despite some mediation or remediation or, I don't know, joint session talk that happened once last week between the city council, the mayor, and the school committee, they last night just went ahead and polished off their budget, which is kind of required by law, right? Uh, it's got $8 billion less than they say they need, and they slashed and bashed a whole bunch of things, including sports and extracurricular activities, and understandably, teenagers come running. I am so angry right now that this is despicable. You have no idea what this is going to do to her senior year. You are ruining all the students and all the hard work they've put into their sports and their careers. You have ruined our schools. Please stop saying sorry. I don't want to hear I'm sorry anymore. I want you all to do something. Find another way. <laughs> I love that last young lady. You know, she's, she's got the look of a 35-year-old mommy. You know, like, find another way. Uh, I'd love to know what the teenagers think the other way is. I'd love to know if the mommies who are worried about everything being ruined understand how the process works. I'd love to know if they know actually who has jurisdiction over this budget. Well, they ran to the mayor's office today and Mayor Solomon uh, in his typical uh, Rhode Island ease faction suggested that there should be no uh, emotional distress on the kids of our society and we should uh, let them have a good summer and we should kind of just promise them that they're going to be able to play uh, in the fall sports because he's going to find a way to get the monies and uh, whew. the school committee is now going to take an action called the Carullo Act against the the city which is why this state is so screwed up. City school committees, town school committees, can sue their own counterparts, and a judge will make decisions. But judges cannot get water from rock. And so what's gonna be fascinating about this discrepancy of $8 million, or this shortfall, so says the school side, is to whether or not they find it somewhere, or whether the judge demands that the city government fund this money at a higher level. But Mayor Solomon better get it through his head that he cannot unilaterally install the football or the lacrosse or the girls field hockey team. There's state law, regulations, contracts, and an organized way of doing business. So his empty promises are just that so far. We shall see. Hey, 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 hey. What else did I want to tell you? Oh, we got a budget. Headline. Do you know how short 9.97 billion is of 10 billion dollars? Have you done that math? Uh, I, I, I just have gave not. You the an, I 30 just gave, million? Yeah, I just gave you the answer. <laughs> if I it's given almost you, 10 billion. If I, hadn't given, if I hadn't given you the answer, would you be able to do it? Uh, on the spot? Right, it's hard. I would Zeros hope that and commas. I could, but you know what? Well, you're a lot, you're a lot closer tough. to your education than I am, so <laughs> I would hope that you could do it quicker. <laughs> Calculators have ruined us. Congratulations on your promotion to the Target 12 thank team. Thank you, thank you. So, Steph, you are working in two capacities. You're City Hall uh, on the beat mm -hmm. following uh, Mayor Gerber. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm covering problems. Do you have any thoughts politics. on that, by the way? What? The, the idea that he's got a baby on his hip everywhere he goes. Listen, he's a working dad. I'm not going to. So you're not going to make it. You're not going to make not, an apology for them, are you? Please I'm don't do this to me. I, do, 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 please don't do this to me. <laughs> please, please do me the honor of being the first reporter to at a press conference say, "Hey, Mayor, can you lose the baby? We got work to do here." You will rise not only to Target 12 status, but to Pulitzer <laughs> Prize status. I will uh, set that aside. Um, but yes, my new beat. I'm covering the city of Providence. 
and politics. So, you know, State House, we've got a couple of weeks left here. Mm -hmm. Big budget, 10 billion, almost 10 billion. Almost 10 billion Just dollars. Well, that's 30 million yes, short. 30 yeah. million is a lot of money. Actually, it's more than what the governor had proposed. So now it can actually be rounded up. Because right. hers was like 9.3. Give me your bullet or two, and then we'll dig into your, your work on this. So I think basically the lawmakers and House leaders chose not to put in a lot of the stuff that Governor Raimondo wanted. Her big win here is she got a good chunk of her pre-K program. You know, she's been out there going to preschools and talking up this universal pre-K. She wants all four-year-olds to be able to have a high-quality pre-K seat by the time she leaves office. They gave her 280 seats, so it's not everything that she wanted. But that's probably the biggest thing that she got in terms of programs, but they did not do her. What's the total need yeah. across the state for pre-K? I don't know. Yeah, nobody does. Well, and it's not mandating that you go to pre-K, so it's, every, it's a seat for every four-year-old that wants it. So it's still up to the parents if they're going to send you to pre-K, to a public pre-K, to a private pre-K. Um, they're not suggesting that it's going to be that it should be mandatory. So it's kind of unclear, right, how many mm. people would like their kids to be going to pre-K right now, but are not because it's not mandatory. You're uh, you're linguistically talented. I thought you were going to roll into Peter Piper, pick the pick the pickle peppers <laughs> with the public private. Pre -K. I know. I've been told I talk fast. No, it's very no. You're good. I mean, I can't I, I can't do it. I I think this uh, pre-K thing, while is common sense necessary. The common sense makes sense. Uh, investing in uh, what we already have K through 12 in the proper fashion seems to me to be the thing that the Ed Commissioner is going to be very high on. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to follow that as she gets her feet wet. When we come back, we'll take a look at set of Steph's overall uh, perspective on the budget and uh, some answers to some questions on pot and stuff. Stay with us. Hard to summarize $9.97 billion in a minute and four seconds, but Steph tried. We eliminated a lot of the new programs. House Speaker Nicholas Mattiello telling reporters late Friday night why lawmakers did not include some of Governor Gina Raimondo's proposal in their rewrite of her budget plan. Including the expansion of the Rhode Island Promise Scholarship, Raimondo wanted to extend the free tuition program to the final two years at Rhode Island College and to adult learners at CCRI. Which we we're trying to make a debt in the OER deficits and um, therefore you had to look very closely and skeptically at any new programs and we just not believe it was the time. Raimondo's proposal to expand pre-K did much better. The budget plan passed by the House Finance Committee Friday night adds 280 new pre-K seats. It's an aggressive expansion of pre-K but we did not make it universal. We we were restricted by budget constraints. House leaders declined her proposal to increase the cigarette tax and raise the minimum wage, but agreed to extend the 7% sales tax to digital downloads and streaming services like Netflix, while also removing the sales tax from feminine hygiene products known as the tampon tax. I think that's awesome. I think it's long overdue. And they're so expensive as they are, you know. I think anything we can do to make them more accessible and affordable for the general public is A+. plus. There's a couple of really pedestrian matters in this in this budget, that being one of them, and people will react to that. Yeah, uh, but, that's but, probably the one that most people were talking about over the weekend. Right, it's I support it, by the way. It's obviously a small part of the major budget, but it's something people have been trying to do for years. Yeah, and it's unfortunately the thing that is the easy report, and the people react to it because they can they can you know get their minds and hands around it. The rest of the the rest of the stuff is often very difficult. Is there something in your enterprising reporting here that you think is kind of interesting, unique, or, or, or compelling about this particular spending plan? Well, I mean, I think, first of all, just looking at the bigger picture, we've got a structural deficit. Um, we've always the had a structural deficit. Right, for years deficit. and years and years and years. So always. the speaker, you know, he did not include, Raimondo had proposed a lot of different tax increases in order to make, get money for the various programs that she wanted. There was a, a tax increase she proposed on employers who don't offer health insurance. Um, there was an increase to the cigarette tax she proposed. Um, there were a number of different things and none of those made it in there. The only one that did was the digital download tax. And so that means a whole lot of programs also didn't make it in there. Oh, and marijuana, obviously, that was going to be a tax. Mm. Um, they're not legalizing marijuana. And so she didn't get everything that she wanted. The free tuition to Rhode Island College was a big one. She testified for that in person and put a lot of her political equity into trying to get the free tuition to Rhode Island College. That's not in there. Um, Speaker was never yeah. going to give her that. Speaker was never going to give her that. That's not just about fiscal austerity. That's about 
that's your baby, and I'm not giving that one to you. Uh, his baby is the car tax reduction. Yes, yes. And, and that and, is staying in, as you can imagine. Yeah, and that was yeah. spawned one day when a couple of these political operatives before a rally said, you know, we've got to come up with something. I promise you, that's exactly how this thing happened. And he knows it, and he denies it now, because it's long enough that he said, be able to say that this was something that was well studied. It was never well studied. Uh, but it's his baby. And the politics, yes. you know, come into into play in the budget. Does the Senate have a baby in this whole thing, meaning? I mean, do they have they, something special? You know what, they do. Um, the Senate president, remember the Fane Tower? Yes. So the Senate president ah, was not right. happy about the fact that the Fane Tower was basically almost scuttled. And, you know, listen, it, it hasn't been built yet. It'll, it's still to be seen if it gets built. But mm. the city, Providence City Council had this big fight over the zoning of the Fane Tower because it's on the old 195 land, which is state property, and the state agreed to lease it to or to sell it to Jason Fane. But the zoning for that part of Providence only allows um, a height limit of, I think it was 100, and they wanted to raise it to hundreds more. 600 feet. Yeah, yeah. and the city council um, passed the zoning change, the mayor vetoed it, and the city council overrode the veto, but this was obviously this major fight that happened in Providence, and the Senate President, Dominic Ruggiero, was like, we need to, in his opinion, we build should be, yeah, we need yeah. to build it, we need to be welcoming to developers, so he uh, sponsored a bill. Well, remember, he's very labor very yes. labor supported right and of yes. course the building and trades labor unions were very strongly sure. in, in favor of the tower whereas a lot of the neighborhood groups were against it um he put a bill in that strips providence of its zoning power over the 195 land and then the speaker's team actually put that in the budget so that was a big win for the senate um that that is now in the budget that's baked the budget still has to pass both the house and the senate and be signed by the governor um but that was a pretty big endorsement of that, um, that they went ahead and put that in the budget. Yeah, well, there's no doubt you're, you're on top of it. That was a good get, because that really is a significant thing from the Senate side. When we come back, her other hat, City Hall in Providence. Stay with us. One thing we uh, failed to mention uh, is the, I mean, we made a short mention of it, but the House leaders are, are going to add dispensaries. I mean, how stupid is this? This is ridiculous. The, the, this is a dodge of the big question, which is whether or not we want to legalize marijuana recreationally in this state. And so what they did is they just went, okay, well, let's just backfill the whole concept by adding dispensaries. Yes, yeah, so the governor has proposed this for a bunch of years in a row. She wanted to add, in fact, even more dispensaries um, than well, they're adding. Well, she confused the issue with yeah. the legalization of yeah. uh, the recreational legalization. And Does the anybody think with six more dispensaries on top of the three that we have, that that that's not going to bleed over into the recreational market by yeah. by by osmosis. Come on. So that's uh, so part of the argument, obviously, for this is there's 18,000 medical card holders. There's only three dispensaries. They've had this. They've had. I mean, we've had medical marijuana in Rhode Island for more than a decade. They've still only had the three dispensaries. They want to add more. To your point about it bleeding into the recreational market. Um, the Ramondo administration wanted to really sharply curtail all the home growing. Because if you have a medical card, you can grow up to 12 plants at home. And the concern is that some of that's making it into the black market because it's not all necessarily being used Duh. by the patient. So, But the lawmakers did not do that. There were a lot of concerns from the medical community that if someone couldn't grow anymore, you know, people have put, I did a story a few months ago, people have put, you know, their retirement savings into building up these operations in their basements where they grow their own medicine and some of those people would have to shut those down and it's a lot more it's a lot more expensive to go to the dispensary and buy right. than it is to grow it at home right so uh, we so they punted they've punted yeah, they've on punted recreational, on recreational you know without making a statement about it I said without saying yeah. you know we're gonna do a two-year wait and we're gonna do some things that, there's no statement about recreational marijuana they just right. didn't do it yeah and the speaker said there was no appetite for it the political will just it wasn't there this year for recreational well the advocates for marijuana uh, legalization are going to be here tomorrow and they are not happy so we'll find out but uh, what their perspective is and all that let's switch to Providence yeah. uh, the tax plan was revealed and uh, then, then uh, a, a special, you know, property tax debate has reared its head, and the East Siders are now pitted against the rest of the city. Talk to me about the whole 
situation. Yeah, so what's going on here is that um, there was a big revaluation this year by state law. They do it every nine years in full. And a lot of people um, in some of the lower income part of the city saw their home values skyrocket um, on the east side where there already are pretty high value homes. Some, not all, but some only saw like a little bit of a value increase from last year to this year. Um, and so what that means is that the mayor said, okay, well, we're going to cut the tax rate because you can only raise taxes like by 4% per year at state law. So he said, well, we have to cut the tax rate in order to stay under this cap. They're still going to raise $12 million in property taxes. Um, additional. Additional from last year. But what it means is that some folks um, are getting a big tax increase from last year and some folks are getting a decrease from last year just because of the math of the revaluation that happened in the new tax rate. So the city council uh, leadership wants to kind of blow this all up and change the way that Providence taxes its residents instead of having an, a non-owner occupied rate, so like for landlords, and then an owner occupied rate for people that live in their house, which is what Providence does now. What they're proposing is to go back to just one tax rate, which Providence used to do this, and have a homestead exemption, which again Providence used to do and other towns do, but they want to make it graduated. And that is really the issue that has people upset because I think you had it up on the screen, You'd get a forty percent exemption you pop that if up you again, go Eric, up if you to, to yeah if nice. you go up to if your home is valued up to three hundred fifty thousand dollars you get a forty percent exemption and then anything above three hundred fifty k would be a twenty eight percent exemption and where are the high valued homes in Providence they're mostly on the east side and so folks are pretty concerned that they would now be taxed unevenly. Um, but the supporters of the plan, like the city council finance chairman, who represents Silver Lake, says this is going to create more equity so that it's not skewed of who's going to get big tax bills and not. The mayor says it's illegal. The mayor's against it. And so this is turning into a legal fight now. And the fiscal year starts on July 1st. Who's the arbiter of whether it's legal or not legal? Uh, the city solicitor put out an opinion saying that this is not legal and that it requires uh, state enabling legislation. The bill's been introduced and they're already having a hearing on it tomorrow. Um, and that it also could be unconstitutional because of the, the graduated part, having the 40% and the 28%. It's not, you know, if the state passes a, 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 bi a, a bill, it's not illegal to have a homestead exemption. Plenty of other towns in Rhode Island have a homestead exemption. Right, it's just the different rates. It's the, the different uh, rates right. that they're um, that the, the city well, there's certain department. shock east siders that prorated they have to spend a little bit more money for their for their homes uh, it's uh, it's almost a laugh to hear them crying poor again I'm no liberal tax policy guy but it cracks me up to hear yeah. them crying poor when very poor parts of the city are getting a little bit of relief from this idea from the city yeah. council alright well this is something that we'll follow very closely uh, good sum uh, again uh, keep the heat on and uh, Thanks for having me on. That baby thing, I just, uh, <laughs> He's a really cute baby. Wait, wait, the, notwithstanding that truth. <laughs> Thanks very much, appreciate it. Final word when we come back. Uh, yeah, so the pro pot people will be here tomorrow night. They're not real excited about what's happened or not happened in that category for them. So we'll dig into that and a whole bunch more. We'll check in with you at three on the radio side on WPRL. We hang out till six each day. Come on back tomorrow night. Thanks for watching. Good night.